Embarking from the OMP, let us now propose several variations of it, all still under the umbrella of greedy algorithms. Indeed, the OMP is only one way to interpret the core idea of pruning the tree of tests, and there are various other options we could propose. As we are about to see, this will give us some freedom in trading complexity with accuracy. Starting from the OMP, we will propose a more complex and thus more accurate method called least squares OMP, and then turn to the other direction of proposing several variations that are cheaper and more crude. Here is an algorithm that may seem, at first, to be almost the same as the OMP. We initialize the support as an empty set and set k to be 1. We define a group of m supports to explore, each being the given support augmented with one of the columns from a. Per each we solve a constraint least squares that approximates b with the tested support. Each of these tests ends up with an error measure and we are to choose the support that gave the lowest error value. If this error is small enough, we are done, and otherwise we increase k by 1 and proceed. What do you think? Is this process different from the OMP? The answer, while delicate, is positive. OMP uses the residual as a proxy to decide on the next atom to choose, and here we avoided this approach altogether. We turn to a detailed description of this algorithm known as the least squares OMP. Starting with the OMP, the main modification is in the way we choose the next atom. While OMP relies on the residual RK-1, we shall operate differently. How? Well, let's concentrate on this very question. Who is the best atom to join the support? OMP answered this question by suggesting the atom that best correlates with the current residual. Is this really the best we could do? Lee Square's OMP says, I do not know. And therefore, let's simply check each and every one, add it to the support, and check the error it leads to, and then decide. Here it is posed formally. We take the existing support as k-1, described as the green columns, augment it with each of the remaining atoms, and solve the resulting least squares. The atom AI that led to the smallest error is truly the best we could offer. And this is what least squares OMP proposes. In fact, OMP is suboptimal in the choice it makes. The above described least squares is done only once on the chosen atom, while the new algorithm applies it m times per each step. Here is a detailed description of the least squares OMP. We initialize with an empty support and set k to be 0. Increase k by 1 and apply this series of steps. First, solve these m least squares problems and get an error per each. Then choose the index that led to the smallest error and update the support accordingly by adding this atom. At this stage, we are supposed to update x for the new support, but this computation has already been done in the sweep stage, so we simply take the solution we got. Finally, we update the residual, and this is done only because we might use it for stopping the algorithm. A few comments are in order here. First, in the first sweep stage, in which we solve m least squares problems, we could use the speed-up recursive method we mentioned earlier. Secondly, as already said, step 4 is not really needed because its results is already created by step 1. Lastly, as opposed to the OMP, the residual has hardly any role here. How does this algorithm compare with OMP? Well, clearly it is more complex. However, it can benefit from some numerical shortcuts that will make it almost as appealing. As we have already mentioned, least squares OMP resides higher on the accuracy scale, likely to provide a better approximation solution. We proceed by seeking ways to further simplify the OMP. How can this be achieved? We are about to meet the matching pursuit, an algorithm that changes the fourth least square step of the OMP thus resulting in a faster method. We will also meet the weak matching pursuit, an algorithm that further simplifies the process by tempering with step one. Let's now go into the details of these two methods. The matching pursuit, MP for short, operates exactly as the OMP in choosing the next atom and updating the support. However, when time comes to update the solution, matching pursuit takes a different route. 
OMP seems to be wasting computations in this step since it does not exploit the previous X solution. Instead, it recomputes this vector from scratch by a full least squares computation. Could we do better? Well, matching pursuit thinks that this is possible. In fact, as this least squares term suggests, matching pursuit keeps the previous solution intact as the coefficients of the already chosen non-zeros. As for the newly chosen atom, MP computes its coefficient z. Recall, however, that b minus a sk minus 1 times the previous solution is exactly the previous residual rk minus 1. Thus, the value of z is simply obtained as the inner product between the chosen atom and this residual. This must remind you of something we have already seen in the OMP in the context of the sweep stage. And here is the full description of the algorithm. This is the OMP, and with this change, we turn to the matching pursuit. This step says, keep the previous solution and update only the coefficients of the newly added atom. Strangely, the update of the new coefficient is described as an addition. Why? Because as opposed to the OMP, MP might choose the same atom several times, and when this is the case, the existing coefficient is simply augmented with the new value. Obviously, MP is faster than OMP, and with this benefit comes the fact that its solution is likely to be inferior in accuracy. Moving to the weak matching pursuit, our goal is to further simplify the overall algorithm. Weak matching pursuits suggest modifying the step of choosing the atom. Recall that MP, just like OMP, computes A transpose times RK minus 1 in order to choose the next atom. If A is big, this amounts to many calculations. Weak MP suggests to apply this step sequentially, one column at a time from A, and stop when a big enough inner product is obtained. How do we decide what is big enough? The answer is simple. It is easy to verify that since the atom AI is normalized, the maximal possible inner product could be the norm of the residual. Thus, we set a threshold to be t times this upper bound and stop the sweep stage when an inner product crosses this threshold. Obviously, t is a value in the range 0 to 1. Here is the algorithm in full details. Starting from the MP, we modify the first two steps to perform a partial search governed by the threshold t times the residual norm. Observe that step 4 remains as the matching pursuit. The value of t dictates how crude this algorithm becomes. If t equals 1, this process will likely run through all the atoms, thus resulting with the matching pursuit algorithm. For t nearly 0, this algorithm will be very fast, but choose poor quality atoms.